Okay. I'm here. Anybody else? Okay. Um, whoops, what just happened? No, no, shit. You're all right, Bob. Yeah. I can see you. Okay, well, I just lost my screen. <laughs> Let's try this again. I can see you. Okay. All right. Oh, um, Somebody just sent a message saying they don't know the passcode. It was one. It was Steve. Uh, no, it's his name. He's from Launch Lab Rocketry. Steve never. The radio velocity. I showed that last year. I'm not going to show it again. Uh, we're we're got all the design issues worked out. We've done a bunch of test flights, and right now I'm actually waiting on our, our friends at Lock to um, sort out getting me some parts, and I think we'll be in production with that as soon as that that happens. So. So that's coming soon. On the high power front, there are two more things we're thinking about doing. The first is to take the Fuss Kit Shadow Lord, which is an existing kit with a, in the, the, the smaller kit has a uh, paper uh, shroud boat tail and scaling that up as well. And it, so I'm using this form also to gain some interest. If people think that's a good idea, we'll go ahead and do it. And also <clears throat> Jim did a series of these uh, jig finned rockets where the, the fins slot together and him and I were kicking around an idea a year ago or so about doing a level one kit that you could get build it on the field and fly it there low and slow because it's got lots and lots of drag which is kind of a nice for a, you know an L1 cert so we're thinking about upscaling that to the point where it can handle an H motor or even an I so it's another idea that's that's probably you know, the, the design is mostly done because it's a standard kit. We just got to work out a few engineering details on what the fins would look like. We'll probably do that later in the year. Now, a couple other things in the past year. So go shifting back to low power. We did introduce a, uh, another educational kit and we sold this to a number of groups here in the Northeast. And it's designed to be a very inexpensive kit. Um, the, the fins are laser cut from cardboard. And to make it the whole thing strong, we've got a ring fin kind of ties them together. It comes with a jig. You get one fin on there, sort of straight, slide the jig on and then let everything cure. And then after that, it's just like sliding the other fins in one after the other until they're all done. And then when that's dry, take the jig off and pop the, uh, pop the ring on with some glue fillets. Uh, I actually have taken a version of this where I take the 18 millimeter mount out and I stuck an E9 into it and threw it pretty much into the stratosphere. So it, it's, it's a very stable design, it's pretty tough. Uh, come down on a, a parachute or a streamer, whatever your, your choice is. So that's something that we did do and we will turn that into a, not just an educational kit, but we'll have that kit on the website. The instructions are, the nice instructions are actually 95% written. So that'll probably go online uh, within the next month. And then we had a couple other ideas we've been kicking around. This thing, um, I saw a picture in a, in a I, just a Google pictures, I, you know, science fiction spaceships. It's in the picture, it's sitting on a launch rail, kind of like that to find the space. And so I made one, I've flown it a bunch of times. The, the wings are just one big chunk of balsa, four inch wide balsa cut at an angle. The rear fin, it's got a uh, balsa boat tail. So that's something that we, we could do if people are interested in it. It's fairly simple. Uh, it's very elegant looking though. And then if you were to go to YouTube and search my name and the words rice rocket, you'll see a couple of high power things that I built and flew. They were all based on somebody challenged me once that you could not build a rocket out of balsa wood and rice paper so I built one. 
And I built this one and after I said, well, yeah, it's too bad you can't make a bigger one. So I actually made a bigger one, which I do not have with me. And then they said, how big can you make it? And we built the 10 foot tall one, which is no longer a balsa and rice paper, but it's the same structure. So it's ribs, a couple of rings just to hold everything together. The ribs terminate onto the nose cone. We're thinking about kitting this. So this would be a very interesting kit. You gotta have some different kind of construction skills. Um, but if, if people are interested, we will go ahead and do, we'll probably make a series of them. It's a, it's a fun thing, very, very unique. Uh, so if people are interested in that, let me know and we will consider doing that kit as well. And then um, one other thing I wanted to mention. So again, some years ago, we not, I bought a microwave oven. So I'm, I'm very much from the Jim Fliss School of Rocketry. If you got a part, you can make a rocket out of it, right? So I got a microwave that had a very heavy, thick cardboard box, very straight and flat, wasn't messed up at all. So I can make some wings out of that. So I made this thing. It's got two big wings. You can see it's a, a bunch of sort of concentric pieces of tubes sliced different ways and glued on top and bottom. Flies very stable on the E15s, E20s. And we are tossing around the idea of kitting that as well. As a, it doesn't glide, it, as the power comes off the motor, it sort of tries to glide, then it just comes down under parachute. So that's what's coming from us and to facilitate some of the things that are been holding us back. Um, we're buying, we're, we're having a nose cone lathe built and we're also separately buying a hobbyist one so we can do prototyping with that. And I'm teaching myself the G code that runs uh, lathes and uh, the 3D printers. From my point of view, pretty straightforward, not terribly difficult. And we'll start with a few things to, to begin with that we need to get done. And then we'll scale up from there. So we're actually slowly working our way into the ability to do more and more uh, of the of the work in-house at Fliskits. Okay, Ray, you got about 30 seconds left. That's okay. That's it. Any, any questions? Uh, someone's asking about the recovery system on that rice paper rocket. How does it work? Rear, rear ejection. Rear ejection. Yep, rear ejection, parachute wrapped around the, uh, the body, and it's all connected inside. Cool. Okay. Excellent. All right. Okay, Ray. Thank you. Thank you. And if you, if you want to hang around and see what else is going on, that'd be great, too. I will hang around till I fall asleep. It's been a long day. <laughs> We've got eight miles of snowshoeing today. So. <laughs> okay. All right. Next, joining us from the East Coast, uh, Mr. Tim Van Milligan. Tim, why are you on the East Coast today? <laughs> Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm on the East Coast because I'm on vacation. So oh. uh, I, I took a little time out of vacation to uh, visit with all my rocketry friends. Um, I'm uh, visiting my daughter. Uh, she lives here in Florida. So I am on the East Coast tonight. Uh, yeah. I also had a long day, but I didn't do eight miles in snowshoes. <laughs> I can't even imagine that. Um, so... Um, What's new at Apogee? Um, last year, we had a great year. Uh, we had some really cool products that came out last year. Um, and I can't remember if they came out before Narcon or after Narcon. So it's kind of a quick review them. Um, the first one was our launch visualizer. Um, this is our cloud-based software that uh, runs simulations, rock sim simulations in the cloud. So you don't have to have um, software installed on your computer. You could just, any device that connects to the internet, uh, you can run it because it's just, it's just web browser based. Um, this has been phenomenal. And I just, every time I play with it, I, I said, man, this, I wish I had this 20 years ago. This is, this was my goal uh, for developing Roxim and, uh, and it happened last year. Um, and then we launched after that, the, um, we call it the widget, which is um, I can take the launch visualizer and I can put it on anybody's website. So if you run a website and you'd write, like to run launch simulations on it, um, get in contact me. We can, we can try to get that launch widget installed on your website so that you can do the 3D visualizations yourself. 
Um, and then also we released last year Roxim 10.4 and 10.5. So we're continuing to upgrade Roxim and we did get those out and there's like lots of little bug fixes also that we released in there. Uh, so that was last, oh, and then the, the biggest um, uh, product that we released last year was our gliding parachute. And this we released in October. And what it does is it allows you to control where your rocket is gonna land. So that problem that you have with rockets kind of drifting away, well, that goes yeah, away. We released in October. Uh, we got somebody's microphone on. I'm, I'm no. hearing myself talk. That goes away. Uh, we got somebody. Can you, everybody please mute microphone their microphone? On. I'm, I'm hearing myself talk. It's, uh, yeah, it's showing Cooper Merck on my screen. Um, so then, um, so that was the gliding parachute. It's, uh, it's incredible. And, and the more and more people are getting involved with it and we're getting, uh, some really great reviews on it. You know, just, I had one video where somebody in the background was, was talking and what they were saying was even, even more phenomenal than what the person flying the parachute was saying. Um, so what's coming out this year, uh, we got another ambitious year planned at Apogee. We're going to try to do a new kit every month for the entire year. So that's 12 new kits. Uh, we released the first one in January called the Quick Draw. This is a BT-80 size rocket that has interchangeable engine mounts. So you can fly it as a single 29 millimeter, pull the engine out, drop in a two engine cluster of 29s. You can pull that one out. You can drop in a three engine 24 or a four engine 24 millimeter. Um, and then we're also selling those engine mounts separately so that if you're designing your own rockets and you wanna have that you know, interchangeability of engine mounts, um, those, those are available as well. Um, and then after that, um, in February, we're going to release a rocket called the Antares. This is a BT-55, um, kind of a futuristic rocket that's going to come out. Um, and then later on, we're planning a little tiny kit uh, called the Feathered Flyer. We're, that one's pretty much almost done as well. Um, as far as high power goes, uh, one of the things that we, we were selling... Um, from Mad Cow, they were producing it several years ago and it was called the, the level two rocket. And it was an all fiberglass, four inch diameter, um, over five feet tall. And they had problems getting fiberglass components. So it kind of went away by itself, but we're going to kit it as an Apogee product. And these are Apogee components, they're not components from any other manufacturer here in the United States. We're sourcing our own fiberglass tubes, fiberglass nose cones, and I'm upgrading the kit from what it was. I'm, I'm redesigning the engine mount, not the engine mount, the, the eBay for it. So we'll have a brand new eBay that's, it's, it's very similar to the eBay that we use on the Katana and the Peregrine. Uh, but it's all fiberglass instead of being there's there's no plywood in it at all um, so that's coming out um, and those parts are on their way to us as we speak so um, i'm hoping that they arrive quick so that we can start putting these things out as fast as possible and then after that we'll probably do another four inch diameter kit with the same nose cone but probably a different size and different um, configuration on fins. Uh, we also are getting a brand new BT-60 size nose cone. Um, we've, we saw the first shots of it, the prototypes of it uh, came in about two weeks ago and we approved them. So now the production is going on um, and in a few more weeks, the production will be finished and then those will be shipped to us. Um, so we'll have those nose cones for sale. And it's a three to one Ogive. So it's, it's a very simple BT-60 size 
Um, and then based on that, we're going to have a bunch of kits coming out with that different nose cone. Okay. You got about a minute, so, Jim. I, so that's it. I'm done. So if anybody <laughs> has any questions, <laughs> well, that's done. my year. <laughs> that's your year. Sounds like a busy one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Some people uh, asking if you'll ever be able to get the, George wants to know if the, the gliding parachute will ever be adaptable to GPS. Um, your your microphone cut out, so I didn't oh, hear what sorry. you said. George was asking if your uh, gliding uh, parachute. Uh, would say that again. To GPS. No, it's my microphone. I'm yeah. not. Yeah, I've been getting intermittent uh, audio on everybody, so it, it just keep talking and something will come through. <laughs> okay, Are you ever gonna have GPS for the gliding parachute? Uh, GPS, that was our goal, but with, uh, with the COVID and the microchip shortages, uh, that kind of put a damper on it um, until the supply chain can start catching up again. We're, we're basically RC right now, but if, if, you know, things work out again, you know, our goal is to bring the GPS back. And uh, Don would like to know if there are any plans for any more 172nd scale models of historic manned rockets like the Gemini Titan or the Mercury Redstone Atlas to go with those beautiful Saturn kits. Uh, there's always plans, <laughs> but uh, there's there's other things that are priority. So not yet, but there we haven't ruled them out. Okay. All right. Thanks, Tim. All right, thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. Next out there. Uh Randy, E Rocket Semrock. Is Randy out there? Randy Bodeway. Hey there. Can you hear me, Bob? Yes, sir. All right. I had, Welcome. I had technical trouble today too. I could not get this thing working at my desk. So I had to come out to the design area. And so you actually get as a backdrop to see where the Right Stuff Rocketeers meet every Tuesday night. We have an open house here in Dayton, Ohio, and uh, we pack the place with Rocketeers building rockets. Uh, the classroom area is also good for any groups that want to come in to build rockets. Uh, we host a lot of events all the time. So, uh, and we love having visitors too. If you happen to be coming into Dayton, Ohio, and especially visiting the uh, Air Force Museum, we're a mile and a quarter down the same road there on. So it's a good opportunity if you happen to be in Dayton, Ohio. Hey, a lot of new things have been uh, going on recently. I just want to throw a few in front of you. Um, this is the Joe's uh, Clip Whip. It's a really nice uh, Clip Whip to get to uh, three sets of, end of hooks and a uh, great way to, to launch those clusters. Uh, I know we've been doing a lot of clusters lately, and that's a good thing to have. Um, the other thing that's kind of neat is I don't know how many of you folks own a, an Estes Pro Pad, but the Estes Pro Pad has one very big flaw in it, and that is it doesn't have a way to put additional launch rods in it. So you can't put an eighth inch or a three sixteenths inch um, rod in it, but, or I'm sorry, three thirty seconds rod, but with our adapter, you can. You simply put this on the existing quarter inch rod that comes with the Estes Pro uh, launch pad, and then you can put your other rods in it right next to it. So it works just like we do our Micromax uh, launch pads and launch rods. It goes on the existing rod, and then you lower your rocket down onto the igniter for the Micromax, where this one, you just lower it down and go ahead and hook it up as you normally would uh, any rocket. So eighth inch and uh, uh, 330 seconds, Problem solved. This is less than 10 bucks at E-Rockets. Uh, it's also, what is it called? It's called a, mm, I forget what it's called here. It's, it's a E-Rockets rod mount adapter for Estes Pro Pad. So if you're interested in that, pick that up. Uh, let's see, what else have we got new? A little bit of 3D printing has been in our world. So we're doing uh, a lot more there. And we have a beautiful, um, mercury redstone tower that has come out. It is in a tough resin. Uh, the detail is just exquisite. Um, and that is now available. We've sold quite a few of those. And also new, and this happens to be a prototype, 
but we also have a one one hundredth uh, cap, uh, Apollo capsule. So if you have a Saturn V that needs to have Apollo a capsule replacement, let me see, this is one, two, I think this is in three pieces. You glue it together, paint it up, and you're good to go. Uh, one one hundredth scale. Uh, let's see, what else is going on? Rocketarium's been big recently. They've got four new kits out, and I've only got three of them to show you. Um, because one sold out already, but there's an Exoset. Uh, that's an MM40, a fantastic looking kit. It's got a lot of real good detail ribs and stuff on the side. So uh, that's been pretty popular. Um, the Alarm is available. And again, it's got the ribs on the side. And you know how these guy, this guy at Rocketarium is, you know, he wants all these fins very far forward, but he uses 3D printed nose cones. So there's a lot of weight up front, uh, which is good. Um, and then this is the Exoset MM38. Um, it again, you know, very high fins on the rocket. Stability is an issue, uh, but you can add weight to that to fix that. Problem. All right. I just came in today. Uh, the boss is here. So if you haven't seen one yet, uh, they are available at eRockets. Uh, some of you already have bought them. Uh, the new catalog is in. I don't have it set up on the web page yet, but I'll have it up by tomorrow. If you need a catalog, you're placing an order. Order a catalog, too, because you'll get it quickly that way. Um, we're going to make some changes on the Hydra 7. Um, the entire, we're doing everything we can to keep inflation at bay. And it's been really, really tough because so many prices are going up, and we want to do everything we can to keep those down. And so we're going to do some redesign work on the Hydra 7. Of course, that's a seven motor cluster. We've been selling this for years and it sells pretty well. Um, we had to make some part changes and it will help us keep the price down. I think we're going to be able to re-release it with the new design and actually possibly be at a lower price. We'll see. Uh, but we're going to go back to one parachute instead of two or three. Um, and we're going to use the Rocketarium plastic nose cone. Uh, up top, and that'll uh, help reduce the cost of that fit for that. All right. We're going to run some specials for this Narcon. Uh, number one, we are going to run BSI. This is the big bottle, 13 ounce bottle. There's three sizes there's the little nine ounce combined. I'm sorry, four and a half ounce combined, nine ounce combined. This is 13 ounces combined. It's the largest size Bob Smith makes in epoxy. The five minute only, we're going to do 40% off uh, for everyone that uh, attended Narcon. And by the way, I'm not going to make you use a coupon code. I'm just going to mark it down 40%. Uh, and I'm going to throw it out. I'm not going to make a headline for it. So if you look for um, a five minute epoxy, you search for that, you'll find it and you'll find it at 40% off just for you folks. All right. Um, another thing that's 40% off is all of the Excel products. And uh, this is just one of their newer products. It's a little um, finger style knife. Uh, anybody that likes doing a lot of her work one-handed, this is a great tool. Um, all Excel is 40% off. It has been since Christmas. I think I'm gonna keep running it at 40% off. So if you ever need blades or knives from Excel, come to eRockets. We've got them 40% off. I may just run that indefinitely. We'll, we'll find out. Uh, that's it. Oh my gosh, I'm all done. Oh, no, no, one more. I have got seven of these left. Um, they are a complete launch pack, uh, two jet motors uh, from Quest. Uh, there are A's, B's, C's, and D's in here. This is a 12 pack. So there's three of each. It's a great way to get started uh, with Q jet motors. This is $35. There's seven left. There's six left. So <laughs> get them while you can. All right, Randy. Hey, what's the word on that big orbital transport you showed last year? All right. Well, it is, it is sitting near my desk every day I look at it. Uh, I am very diligently trying to find a designer to add to our staff. Uh, Phil Queen had been our designer for a number of years. Uh, he came down with COVID in January and it just didn't allow him to come back to work. 
So I've been without a designer since January. It's been a whole year. I am seeking a designer if you're interested. It is not an at-home job. It's a job in Dayton, Ohio. And uh, if you're interested, give me a call. I'd love to hear from you. Okay. That's the only way we're going to get the orbital transport out. Okay. All right. Thank you, Randy. You bet. Okay. All right. Moving right along. Matt Johnson. Are you out there, Matt? Yes, sir. How do oh. I get my screen up? Let's see. Click on... Uh, Share. Share. Yeah. There you go. It says disabled. Nope. Uh, I see you. Do it. Do it now to share your screen. Okay. And so if I go like this, can you see my stuff? Uh, can you see my stuff now? We Oops. see you. Oh, uh, really? Okay. Yeah. You can't see. see can't you. see my screen. You can't see your screen. No, no, your screen's not coming up, Matt. Huh. Okay. I thought we. I don't know. I thought we had a way to do that. No PowerPoint presentation? Okay. I can do it without PowerPoint. It sh <laughs> should be working. In which way? He's I made you a co-host. Yeah, I made you a co-host, which should allow you to share your screen. Okay. Um, so I bring that over. Can you see it? No. Um, no, Matt, you need to click on share screen and then pick the what you want us to see. You can't just drag the, the okay. power. Uh, no, I mean, I have two screen. screen. No, no, I have two screens. That's why I'm trying to get it on my on my my screen I'm using. So it's it's OK. Um, I don't see anything on here. But, I mean, I got my screen in front of me with my image, but uh, that's OK. That's OK. I, I, I'm not savvy enough, I guess. OK. So uh, Matt Johnson, Altera Rocketry, been doing it for about uh, five years as Altera Rocketry. And give me one second to get my PowerPoint back up. I did lose it. Sorry about that. Um, and I've been selling the N1 kit uh, 122nd scale for quite a few years. Uh, I also produce the uh, kit for V'ger from Star Trek The Motion Picture, which uh, has been come, become very uh, buildable ever since the uh, director's cut came out with the design. Uh, and that is a 140,000 scale kit at 25 inches. And uh, I also make that kit as a static model because it's such a good museum piece. Uh, I also have the uh, Cremator Accessible Salts distributor, which uh, is not approved by the NAR. And uh, that's been around for about a year and a half. Um, Falcon 9, if, uh, by the way, these are all available on eBay and at eRockets. Uh, Falcon 9, Dr. Zook scale, I have the uh, companion set of uh, uh, tubage and uh, landing legs along with grid fins that are laser cut and also the decal set. And Randy's got those. And then uh, Falcon 9, I have a 148th scale. Uh, four foot model that I've had out for about six months. It flies on five motors and it all came about because I found a nice uh, dragon bank that was 148 scale. And I said, I can make a kit out of that. So I've sold about four or five of those so far. Uh, I make parachutes, both uh, spider wire and carpet thread. And Randy carries those. And I also have the uh, ratio sheets for Newtons and parachutes and Randy carries those. And the big news is that uh, about two months ago, the second edition of the N1 uh, reference book is completed and is on Amazon. It's 720 pages, which is three times the size of the original, mostly due to a complete uh, access to Rust Cosmos and Cosmonautica magazine. Uh, the actual title is For the Moon and Mars, A Bold Vision, the N1, a reference guide to the Soviet super booster program and its reach beyond the moon, 1940 to 2040. And that's a very deliberate title because Roscosmos uh, Encyclopedia went to 2040. And even though the war started as soon as I finished the book, um, it's fascinating to see what the plans were and the fact that they keep... Uh, trying to take stuff that we had planned for the lunar gateway program and we're throwing it at the iss at the last minute 
Um, the new book has completely new CGI work by Nick Stevens. It has completely new measurements by Alexander Slyadinsky, who measured the 36-foot model at the Mos uh, Moscow Museum. And it also has uh, detailed information on the alternative for the N1, which is the UR700, and uh, future plans for space from 1975 up to 2040 for lunar programs and Mars programs. Uh, it's on Amazon in two parts because the spine, Amazon required it to be in two sections. So it's part one, part two on Amazon. It's 118 for paperback and 138 for hardcover. We've sold 205 copies in the first 60 days. And uh, the chart inside that we have four pages of charts that are based from 1900 to 2040. Uh, Randy was good enough to create a six foot long version with all four charts on one page and he's selling those at E-Rockets. So that's my story. Okay. Any questions for Matt? Sounds like you got a lot of things going there, Matt. Yeah, uh, I'm glad I could get it all out there. That's pretty good <laughs> without, with losing my, my, my pictures. So that's fine. Yeah. Okay, any questions for Matt, folks? Someone said Starship model. Any thought of making a uh, model of the SpaceX Starship? Uh, there, actually, I actually had an article in Sport Rocketry about the small 3D printed one that was available. So I guess um, I haven't thought about making a big one yet. I'm kind of fantasizing about making the Phoenix from first contact first and, and the Botany Bay. I want to make a couple of Star Trek kits. I think the Botany Bay will make a great kit. So, okay. and Paul asks, uh, would you consider an ebook version of the new one of the N1 book? We tried, and for some reason, the Amazon version was pixelated and not appropriate, and everybody said to take it down. So it was up for like two days, and we took it down. So uh, for some reason, going through the Amazon process, it just didn't work. I don't know why. Uh, that's that's all I can say about that. However, uh, if people are looking for photographs and CGI information stuff like that, don't forget in the back of the book, you can order the library, which is all the photographs, is six CDs of photographs, and you can also order the AutoCAD from Alex. So uh, the, the digital information is available. Excellent. And that's in the back of the book. Okay. Well, I or did on like eBay. Or, or on eBay. eBay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I did enjoy your, your first edition. I'll have to look into that second edition now thank you it's been an absolute joy to have it uh, produced with all the new information it was horrifying to have the war start at the very end but we addressed that in the introduction okay any other questions for matt okay thank you matt Th thank you guys okay all right we have one more participant from the east so uh, rick randall new way space models are you out there Yes, I'm out here. Okay, greetings. Good good evening. Okay, go right ahead. Hello, everybody. I'm Rick Randall from New Way Space Models, and um, typically the square rocket guy has been uh, called many times. And uh, I was going to show you a couple that have been available for a while, but are favorites. Um, and the uh, first one is the. Dur squared max, um, although it does mess with people some because it's three fins on a square tube, but it does come with an alignment guide so that you can uh, do that really easy, but it, it gives it a weird look, but it's kind of cool at the same time. And then a little bit newer but available is the angled invader instead of the alien invader like the old Estes kit. Uh, the square representation is very good on this one, uh, and it has a 3D printed nose cone and the little pods glue on separately to give it that look like the old Estes nose cone. And this one's been out for a little while. This is the Boxy Birdie. It's just a little featherweight recovery rocket, like the Estes Birdie, but a square version of it. Uh, just laser cut mat board and uh, goes together very simple and uh, it's kind of fun and, and square. So I've also dipped my toes into the round world just a little bit uh, because I am having difficulty with uh, the manufacture of the square tubes. Um, there's probably a lot of tube stories out there. Um, I'm having some problems. 
So I've dipped my toes into the round world a little bit and I'm making a couple of clones that people just haven't done before. Uh, one that's been available is the bat, the old Estes bat, kind of a hard one to get. So I thought it'd be a neat one to make. So that's that one. And then the Mars Snooper 2, everyone does the Mars Snooper, but this was uh, the 2, which was one of my favorite childhood rockets back when I started years and years and years ago. So that's um, available. And then the next one, which is new and haven't, has not been seen yet, so this is the, uh, a new one, is the old uh, Nike Ajax. Oh, wow. And uh, it turned out really well. I, uh, some of the parts that I've done are laser cut versus cut them out yourself or uh, that kind of stuff. And uh, it makes it a little bit easier to build, but it's um, another old favorite of mine. So I thought it'd be a great one that I haven't seen out there in the world before. So that's, that's brand new, no one's seen that. So that, that'll be available soon. And most of this stuff is available at eRockets. Um, Back to the square stuff, uh, some of the stuff I'm working on, <clears throat> I kind of mixed Orville Carlyle's uh, original rocket, the very, very first one, the Mark I, had the leg, the stilt legs on it, and the Flizz kit, Deuces Wild, I kind of mixed those together, and I got the Mark I, II. so it's a, it's got stilt legs, but it's got two canted engines. So the engines shoot away from the fins uh, and it's very stable, flies very well. Um, and I painted it like the original Mark I, which was a silver nose cone, red body and yellow fins. So that, that one is uh, gonna be available soon, hopefully. Another one that I'm working on that some people have seen on the internet and stuff uh, is the USS Element, which is kind of my, uh, Ode to the Andromeda from Estes. It's kind of a similar, it's got lots of interesting details, uh, little cardboard things, little antennas, a lot of windows, and a different kind of a nose cone shape. That one is, I'm hoping to still be able to do, uh, probably be in limited quantities, but uh, that USS element. And then some of you who've seen me at launches or through different things through the years, uh, I have drug my youngest son along and uh, he sometimes throws a design at me. And uh, this was one of his designs that we're working on. It's another uh, featherweight kind of recovery. It's called the cube. And it's a very simple laser cut parts, square cube uh, with the engine comes out the bottom and the little legs give it uh, stability. And it's just a neat, interesting looking little rocket. And that one hopefully will we'll get in the early part of this year also. And then quite a few years ago, uh, I introduced um, our, a rocket, talked about doing an airplane rocket. And uh, it was Peter Alway actually told me to call it the US Square Force. And that was this rocket here. And so I always wanted to continue that line with uh, new kind of jets, rocket jets. And so this is my interpretation of the F-22 kind of, and it's the N-22 uh, night storm is what I'm calling it. So it's all black with white decals that have, give it a little detail. Uh, 3D printed nose cone. And I'm particularly proud of this one because it just turned out really cool. <laughs> and that's pretty much everything I've got going right now. And, uh, you know, still having fun making square rockets. Yeah, they're cool. Hey, uh, um, uh, Rick, on the Nike Ajax, what's the motor and the booster? What size? It's 18 millimeter, like the original Estes kit. And it's single stage? Correct. Okay. Cool. It's an exact clone of the Estes kit. Okay. And any, I also want to ask, uh, any plans for more Higgs form kits? Uh, I actually made a batch for uh, that guy that designed that rocket. 
Um, that was kind of an exclusive for him. Uh, the guy, Tom Cohen was his name. He made a gigantic one of them. Uh, so he has those kits. I never really offered them really much for sale myself. So probably not. And someone's asking, Paul is asking about the square Saturn. I knew that'd come up. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, I just had a lot of problems with it. And uh, the tubing is also now a problem with that particular one. So um, that's, that's probably a maybe at this point. Okay. All right. Any more questions for Rick? Okay. Rick, thank you so much. Not Appreciate a problem. You coming on. Enjoyed it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. We're finally moving away from the east and moving past central into the mountain time. So, mountain time. First up is Ellis Langford out there of Estes. Good evening, everybody. How are, how's everybody doing? Hello, Ellis. We're good. Uh, good. So I figured I wanted to, uh, to first say thanks, Randy, for plugging uh, several of our new rockets. Um, we uh, appreciate that. Um, and you're, we, uh, we certainly do, uh, do think that uh, eRockets is a good supplier. And if, you, uh, you know, if you're somewhere else or they're out of stock, estesrockets.com. Um, we also sell in a variety of other places. Several other of our other retailers are here too. But here is the, uh, Randy had a copy of the boss. Here's the actual rocket. Um, let's see if I can get it on my screen here. Um, so, um, and then um, I'll pull up my uh, presentation here so you can actually see a few of these things. Um, let's see if I hit. Share screen. And all right, that's not working. All right, never mind. So, um, Here's the current catalog as uh, mentioned. Welcome to uh, order those um, or pick them up at your uh, local hobby shop. If they don't have them, they should be able to get them for free as well. Um, but, uh, and then on the cover of that, let's see if I can get enough distance here is our So Long, which is our new 29 millimeter two-stage boosted rocket. Um, and so this is a prototype, which is why it has a different paint scheme. Um, but you can see it's a, uh, a fairly substantial rocket. Um, and uh, it'll go uh, roughly out of sight, um, but uh, it on two F-15s, which are back in stock. We've upgraded our manufacturing uh, process for those, and we should have those um, in stock. Uh, well, they're in stock now, and they should be in stock going forward. Um, and you're welcome to reach out to me if anybody has any any questions um, about those, or if you uh, if your local hobby shop has trouble getting them, um, either uh, to me or to uh, uh, our customer service department. Um, but, um, and then the other new thing that we have, uh, just gotten done is, um, a sanding bar, um, that, uh, those Hobbyco, uh, used to make them before we had, uh, Hobbyco ran to some issues, as everybody knows, uh, especially including us. Um, and, uh, so we actually ended up getting a, uh, a new um, metal die made. So this is a special um, sanding bar. You can see it has a much thicker um, uh, base plate 
Um, I don't know if people can see that real well. Um, and it comes with, um, we sourced a, uh, a, a normal uh, adhesive sandpaper. Um, so you can buy it from Estes. Um, we'd be happy to sell you uh, six sheets of it in 80, 120, and 240, or you can buy the giant rolls of it. Um, we, we sized it so that it'll take standard widths. Um, we did uh, source a particularly brand that uh, the adhesive is um, uh, slightly weaker than normal, which is actually intentional so that it'll peel off um, in one piece instead of having to uh, get out your uh, exacto scraper and uh, chisel the thing off of the um, uh, off of your sanding block when you need to change grits, which uh, I don't know about you guys, but I've I've done a few times. And anyway, so um, but yeah, that's available now. Um, I know people have asked about other lengths. We'll see how this does. Buy enough of these, and you might get longer lengths. We'll see. Um, uh, let's see. I think those are the things I've got today. Um, we've got the um, Black Brant 12 and the Great Goblin. Uh, Black Brant 12 is um, a sport scale model of uh, NASA's Black Brant 12, which is a four stage um, Talos Terrier Black Brant. Uh, um that they use for uh sound that's a sounding rocket that uh it's just a a very cool looking one that they're still flying um and then the great goblin is the is a uh, an upscale of um the goblin that we um you know that we've had in the line for a couple of decades now um and that should be released um this summer um it's the same size as the uh the dur red mac the the dur big red max um so yeah any questions <laughs> there's a ton of them coming up on the screen here uh, ls let me see if i can get them all to you here going back to the beginning uh let's see here uh, let's see okay uh one moment please oh uh bernard asked rumor has it that there will be no more bt65 tubing used on green eggs and Olympus. Is that true? Any other tube sizes on the chopping block? Uh, no, we're not just, we're not current. We're, I mean, that's not a tube size that we sell in retail packaging, but we're not changing, we're not changing anything about the kits. So is the kit being discontinued? Okay. Um, so let's see, lots of other questions. Uh, sandy bar cool. Uh, what about um, more motors? People are asking about, uh, you know, B14, C50s, more powerful E motor. Yeah, um, the 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 ones that we just came out were were the um, the uh, other delays of A3 um, that just came out. Um, for the world championships um, next uh, summer or this summer rather um, in Texas. So I just want to have a brief plug. Everybody come to Austin um, in July. Uh, it's going to be really fun. Um, James Duffy could use your help uh, putting the thing on. But um, you can, you know, see how people lose, uh, you know, a cup three gram models on an A, on an A motor. So um, the... Uh, but so as to the next, the next rocket, we haven't decided yet. Um, B14, probably not. Those were made on, those were drilled. Um, so they were made, they were pressed and then drilled. Um, they had an automatic machine to do it, but that, uh, that machine um, was scrapped uh, a while ago and I'm not, it, that's not, that's not high on our list of priorities. Sorry, guys. Um, other delays, particularly boosters. Yeah, that's possible. Um, I, I'm, I don't have a, 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 
uh, list in order of preference that I'm going to share right now. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't have a, I, I don't have any more motors that we're imminently releasing. We're working on other motors, um, but nothing imminent. Okay, how goes it with GoX? Are you getting that plan up and running? Yes, we just had our grand reopening a um, couple months ago. Um, and that uh, we've had a variety of issues, um, particularly, I mean, supply chain issues, getting things done, I mean, getting parts sourced. Um, the biggest one has turned out to be insurance. Um, not terribly surprisingly that the plant just blew up and so insurance companies don't want to insure it. Um, but we found one um, and we got everything in place and we're produce or we're just starting production. Um, it's gonna be a little while because uh, the US military wants everything they can get um, is basically their order to us. Um, that they, um, yeah, they said that they, I mean, they have, you know, all kinds of specifics on, on their order and it's mil spec and there's lots of testing, but basically their order boils down to we want everything we can get because it turns out that black powder is still used in a as a primer um, in a decent number of weapon systems, um, including 155 artillery shells, which the Ukrainians are firing as fast as we will ship them. And so the U.S. production is really is starting to ramp up. And so we're supporting that. But it does mean that um, the consumer powder might take a little while. So I don't have a date for that. Um, but we're working on it. We're thinking of you guys and we appreciate everybody's patience. Okay. And how's the survey for the new kits going that you're doing online for uh, bringbacks? Great. Any results? Any results Keep yet? Keep, Keep voting. I think it's Keep, closed now. Keep submitting your, uh, keep submitting them. Um, yeah, we, we're, we love to hear the feedback. Um, and if you have other ideas, you know, send them, send them in. Um, we, that we do pay attention. Um, we don't have, we're not, we don't have results that we're announcing yet, but, um, yeah, we do pay attention and it does feed into our product development process. Okay, great. Thank you, Alice. Appreciate that. And we'll move right along. Uh, Going to North Coast Rocketry is Matt Steele out there. Yeah, good evening, everybody. How you doing? Good to see you, Matt. Well, thanks. Um, it's been a busy year for me professionally, which means that North Coast has suffered as well. Um, since uh, Aerojet, where I work, we make all the rocket motors for Javelin, Stinger, and uh, GMRS. And uh, we are, we are as a... Uh, as Ellis alluded to, we are busy as well trying to supply things to support the Ukrainians in the in the war. So uh, my real job is kind of interfered with the one on the side. But uh, last year I did manage to get the the two point six inch diameter corporal out, and uh, and that was a big success. That's been one of my favorite ones, and it's been in about uh, four different versions now through North Coast's uh, <clears throat> life lifespan. So. So uh, that's uh, that's it. The other thing is, is I'm, I'm moving into starting to do some some um, ground support equipment to support our products as well. And so uh, I was able to bring out the the LaunchMaster launch controller um, this fall, and this is basically sized for um, D, E, F, and G type models. Um, and it comes with a NICAD battery pack that you can order optionally or it accepts that. And that's what it's designed to be used for. So um, in all honesty, <clears throat> my favorite launch controller is uh, is uh, the S the old Estes command controller that Mike Dorfler uh, designed, but they're, they're few and far between. And so I got to the point, I went to Dave Myers, uh, who also worked at Estes with me and asked him to design a new one. And I think this is going to be my new favorite. It has most of the features uh, that were in the command control that I liked, but just a single battery pack and uh, a little smaller, uh, smaller to deal with as well. So those are things that are out there. Um, I am working on the, uh, 
the sports scale javelin built around the the quest uh nike fin units which interestingly enough uh, when uh when i was talking with ellis at narum this year uh, <laughs> that was the size of his original one so um that is not too far away i really just need to finish up the instructions i struggled all of last year to get it to fly straight uh there were unlike the big one there were some stability issues that i had to work through and i think i definitely have it licked now so that one will be out hopefully within the next month and then following right on its heels is the uh, the sls i've got all the flight testing done that we're working with artists to get uh, this one's actually going to have uh uh full body wraps for the uh the main tank and uh some of the capsule and the uh solid rocket motors so uh so we're trying to tweak those and get that part just right and then that kit is ready to uh ready to be released it'll be around uh, a 2.6 inch diameter main tube and have uh, a lot of 3d printed parts for the upper portion and the nose cones and solid rocket booster uh nozzle areas like that but uh turns out to I'm, I'm pretty excited about that one and uh i actually went online and asked people how to go do the the paint because originally i was going to paint it and the prototypes have been flying have been painted and a number of people came back and said go do the wraps well based on the success that we had on doing the scorch with its wraps and like that i took those suggestions seriously and i'm really happy with how i think this is gonna gonna turn out and then um, I have another one in the works that I've been working on for two years that I've just finally need to go get out the door. And then uh, the four inch diameter stuff is right behind that. And uh, I've, I've got a, the Phantom 4000, uh, let's see, uh, part, one of those is sitting right back there. <laughs> and I have uh, the big archer uh, will be the first two released on that. Uh, in reality, it probably will be this fall. I have all the parts and hardware, but um as ellis said uh my focus between now and then is getting ready for the world championships in austin and uh so those will probably go back burner although um like i say i have uh and have a couple of interesting technologies in them that's a little bit different than what we've done before and i will probably move um move those into the 2.6 inch kits as well and then lastly i have uh motor retainers screw on motor retainers and that that'll be announced in the catalog that i've been been testing uh 3d printed ones like that so those are the big things that i've got going on in the in the near-term future well someone someone wrote matt that the four inch archer would be awesome yeah that harkens back to the original days and uh, um so yeah i'm excited to bring it back as well i'm not going to bring it back in the original configuration because when we first brought that out and gary will laugh um there was only one real G motor you could use, which is a G60-5, and it really wasn't quite enough for it. So we had it actually supplemented with 2D12s. You wouldn't do that now, but <laughs> that's the way the original ones came out. So, um, so uh, yeah, it uh, it should be fun to bring that back. Okay, and Robert asks, any chance of bringing back the shuttle stack for a limited run? When I retire, <laughs> actually. <laughs> Actually, I mean, I have parts and different things, and I do have a plan to eventually bring that back, but that's going to take a considerable amount of effort to do. The nice thing is, is uh, what we learned on the on the big javelin and, and uh, the little one and some of that is the advent of 3D printing parts solves one of the major headaches of the old one. And um, I do have a good vacuum former guy in the area who's helping me on the F-117s that is up for this and so let's put it this way i've stashed a whole bunch of 172nd kits to help me to get down that but but honestly in the foreseeable future i don't have time to devote to that and so that probably will come somewhere well downstream okay any more questions for matt okay like your new launch controller matt i've used it it's good so one other thing i forgot is there'll be a, a pad uh, coming out to complement it and it'll be an upgrade over the old uh the old uh pad we had for north coast so i i do have an integrated uh, pivot with that'll take all three rods on that and uh, a unique approach to the blast deflector so don't know if that'll be uh spring or fall we'll we'll see but it is coming 
Okay. Okay. Uh, no other questions for Matt. Okay. Thank you very much, Matt. Okay. All right. Going to now over in Mountain Time. Let's go to uh, Gary Rosenfield with Aerotech and Quest. Welcome, Gary. Hey, Bob. How's it going? Going well, Gary. Good to see you. All right. Let me let me share this screen. Is it up? Yes. Okay. Got it up still? Yes. Excellent. All right. Uh, I want to thank Bob and Todd and Ed for putting this on at, at Narcon. And uh, we always look forward every year to being involved in this. It's a, it's a big kickoff for the, for the season for us, for the flying season, to uh, talk about the new stuff that we're planning. So uh, let's, we're going to have to go through this pretty quickly since I've got a time limit. <clears throat> so what we like to do is go through uh, a recap of our last year's releases because uh, some of you weren't here when we did release it and other products we've released since we since Narcon. So let's talk about this. Uh, one of the latest things we brought out was the uh, 29 by 95 millimeter E35 Q jets. These are white lightning motors with 40, a full 40 Newton seconds of impulse, 1.1 second burn, uh, under 20, under 30 grams, 25.2 grams of propellant. So they're US mailable. Uh, 57.3 grams total weight, 5, 8, and 11 second delays, 20% more impulse than an E16 black powder motor, and 70% of the weight of that same motor. And of course, it's 24 millimeter, not 29 millimeter. They are TRA certified and California Fire Marshal approved. Now, the F41, some people are wondering what happened to that. Uh, they were delayed due to technical considerations, and we're, we've currently got them in a beta test program trying to work out some of the issues. But likewise, uh, white lightning propellant, 46 Newton seconds, 1.1 second burn right at the 30 gram limit for US mailable shipping, 62 gram total weight, same delays as the E35, uh, less weight, 93% of the F15 black powder, 60% of the weight of that same motor, triply certified. California Fire Marshal approved. We're anticipating a, a true release in the summer this year, hopefully. Uh, the I-40, this is a DMS motor, disposable motor system, fiberglass case, 38 millimeter motor, warp nine propellant end burner with a partial core, uh, has a 10 second burn time, just about 375 Newton seconds, 100, 197 grams of propellant, 360 grams of total weight. It's plugged, you have to use an electronic uh, ejection system. It'd be great for large gliders and uh, lightweight small rockets for high altitude flights. Again, triply certified California State Fire Marshal approved. Uh, the J615, this was the first aerospike motor that's ever been certified and available to anyone. Uh, fits the uh, 54 852 motor hardware, so it's a reload, super thunder propellant, uh, 745 approximate Newton seconds total impulse, 1.2 second burn, 370.5 grams propellant weight, 801.7 grams loaded weight, has an interesting exhaust plume, kind of feathery, no mock diamonds, uh, very high thrust for heavy rockets, small fields, that kind of thing, triply certified and California Fire Marshal approved. Uh, these were a little more recent, the K750 uh, reload kit, another Super Thunder motor, one grain, 75, 1280 motor hardware, uh, just under 1300 Newton seconds total impulse, 1.7 second burn, 595 grams of propellant, 1,940 grams, 98, I'm sorry, 1,948 grams total weight. Again, plugged only, all these 75 millimeter motors, you have to use electronic recovery system deployment. These are perfect for heavy rockets on small fields. I've seen pictures of people flying them in uh, on uh, the rocketry forum, people posting pictures of them, really cool. Triply certified and CSM, CSFM approved as well. Then a really quite recent uh, toward the end of the year, the K1800. This is a two grain uh, similar motor to the K750 uh, <clears throat> designed for the two grain 2560 75 millimeter hardware, uh, 2440 newtons, newton seconds total impulse, 1.4 second burn, uh, a little over 1100 grams propellant weight, a little less than three kilograms total weight, plugged only again electronic uh, recovery system deployment, 
again, great for heavy rockets on small fields and also certified and California approved. And of course, we had our new website, which has uh, all thousand so, some odd products of Quest and Aerotech on the same store, and uh, which includes all our 11 page comprehensive price list products and our four page Aerotech Quest hobby retailer price, uh, price list. Uh, most of the product photos are, are now online and our popular resource library is nearly complete. That's available over there on the RCS site, but we have a link to it. Update on our new facility. Uh, that's our 15,000 square foot uh, consolidation of a new warehouse, offices, and additional manufacturing capability. It's right next door to our existing propellant mixing and motor processing facility. It will be in addition to, not instead of, uh, that facility. We'll have a 30-foot tall and 24-inch diameter initiator rocket outside. You can see there, if you look at the picture, there's a person standing there. It's pretty big. Uh, it'll include a museum, showroom, and a retail store. We're planning company tours. Our uh, ribbons, ribbon cutting ceremony, we're expecting uh, probably in the fall, but we're going to be opening and, and moving in sometime around the middle of this year. Yeah, we had uh, a seasonal production decision, which was not popular to some, but some most people understood it. We already had about 400 propellant products. So we looked at the list and we set aside 50 motors for seasonal production. Uh, these are motors that had very low sales. We've, we've already produced a run for last year. Uh, next run will, will likely be late this year. Uh, and of course it makes more room for new products to be introduced. So let's, let's talk about uh, this year. We are uh, re we're in the process of rebranding our product line. A lot of you uh, probably think are a lot, we have too many, uh, brands. So the Quest kits will remain the entry-level product to low-power rocketry. Uh, Q-Jets will remain as a lower-cost, low- and mid-power composite propellant motor line using the thermoplastic cases and lower-cost nozzle materials. Enerjet will strictly be modern reproductions of the legacy motors and kits. All other motors and kits will be Aerotech, and Econojet and Economax are gone. We're upgrading our static test facility. We, we uh, purchased a custom uh, launch controller with a data trigger from Wilson FX. They did a great job on it for us. Uh, we have a new Duotron data acquisition system with a new and a new load cell and pressure transducer to add to our existing capabilities. This will have six channel capability for thrust, pressure, and multiple temperature channels recorded simultaneously. We'll be able to record at 20,000 hertz or higher on all channels. And we have a new concrete backstop or vetment for the test cell, and we'll be able to test larger motors than we're even making now. We have a new clamshell uh, for our single-use big motors, the G especially. As you can see there, that's a G80 there. Uh, that'll be uh, for those standard G motors. It's also designed to work with the 29 by 98 millimeter standard F motors. And it will also work with our 24 by 95 millimeter F motors. So we'll have one package to handle all those instead of the bags and header cards. There'll be a full, full, full color facer card with improved instructions and a complete data panel on the reverse with thrust curves. We, I'll show you this after the presentation. I've got a sample here. Okay, some more motors. M2225 uh, super white propellant, 75 millimeter reload kit. Uh, I won't go through all this stuff because I'm probably running short of time. But, it's okay, uh, Gary. Keep going. I'm, I'm doing okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, super white lightning propellant. This is our higher ISP white propellant. Uh, it's designed for the four grain 75 hardware, a little over 5,200 newton seconds, 2,418 uh, newtons peak thrust, 2.32 2 second burn time, uh, a little under five kilograms total weight. This is plugged only, and you have to have an electronic uh, recovery system deployment. Uh, good for level three attempts or high performance flights, nice flat thrust curve, high thrust, uh, certified and California approved, uh, 406 uh, retail uh, each, and we're going to have that available in the spring. Uh, you, you, you've heard about the 05280, well now there's the 05500. We had to do a redesign on this motor for various reasons, and uh, this will replace the 05280 which was placed on hold in 2021 due to technical and supply chain issue, issues. So we've redesigned it with a thicker fiberglass case and no liner. It's uh, still the highest performance 98 millimeter motor out there, 21,384 newton seconds, 
7,552 Newtons peak thrust, 4.03 second burn time, uh, a little under 10 kilograms propellant weight, just under 17 kilograms total weight. Again, plugged only. It will have a smoke charge. Again, highest performance, 98 millimeter motor available. It is triply certified, but you can't, can't buy them in California because of their regulations. Uh, just under 3K each. And again, early 2023 available availability. Very soon, uh, they will be shipping. Uh, a couple of cool motors here. This is the J1265 Super Thunder. This has a 14-second adjustable delay. It's a DMS motor, so it's a disposable motor. Super Thunder propellant, uh, 54 millimeter by 358 millimeters long, uh, 1,072 Newton seconds. Just a short burn, 0.85 seconds, uh, 500 gram, 507 gram propellant weight, 1,095 gram total weight, 14 second adjustable delay. Great for boosters and heavy single stage rockets. Again, on small fields, a lot of people are flying off small fields and they want these short burn high thrust motors. So uh, again, triply certified, California approved, uh, 179.99 MSRP. And we will av announce availability and shipping at some point here in the near future. Going from one extreme to the other, from a K1265 to a K62. This is another DMS motor, 54 millimeter. It's warp nine end burner with a, par a partial core. It's a 54, it's the same dimensions <clears throat> as the K, uh, 14 as the J, I'm sorry, 1439 Newton seconds total impulse. It's got a 23.1 second burn time. 831 grams propellant weight, 1277 grams total weight. It's plugged only, uh, not adjustable delay. Uh, this would be great as an upper stage to that K1265 or lightweight single stage rockets for flights to high altitudes. I flew this at the Hamster Dance competition last year to nearly 21,000 feet, and it would have gone higher if I if I didn't if I had not used a flyaway rail guide. Again, triply certified, California approved, 199.99 MSRP. Uh, we'll announce shipping and availability later this year. And I'm gonna, I think we've talked about these two, the N1000 and the N17, 1975. These are uh, disposable analogs of the N1000 and the N2000 reloads. Uh, we, we were supposed to bring them out last year, but we're gonna try as hard as we can to get them out this year. So that's it for the main products, but of course, there has to be another thing, right? So uh, after the release and success of the F-52 Classic Enerjet, it seemed natural to want to develop and release the rest of the Classic Enerjets. All right. So there was a triad, right? So we're talking about, yeah, the E-24. Uh, this, is, this will again use Enerjet Classic propellant. It's 36.3 Newton seconds total impulse, 1.7, 1.6 second burn time, 18.4 grams, so it's US mailable, uh, a little under 71 grams total weight. It'll be in the same delays as the original Enerjet motors, four, seven, and 10 Enerjet E24 delays. Uh, it is certified and California approved. A two pack will be 4199 MSRP, will include the, the first fire mini initiators. This is a plan for, for uh, in a, a few months of availability, spring 2023. And then you gotta have, you gotta have an F-67. Again, classic propellant, 77.5 Newton seconds, 1.4 second burn, uh, 36.8 grams propellant. You can't have, you can't really have a full F or close to a full F and, and be US mailable. So this, is, this will be a hazmat shipping type motor. 85.7 gram total weight, again, uh, the, the legacy delays that were in this motor, 6, 9, and 14, triply certified, California approved, $49.99 for a complete two-pack with initiators, spring 2023 availability. And we have one more thing. So if you're going to have your classic Enerjets, why not have some classic Enerjet kits to fly them in, right? Okay. So we're going to bring out the classic Enerjet Nike Ram. This is re-engineered re by Enerjet historian Bob Sanford. Take a bow, Bob. <laughs> it's uh, 35 millimeters or 1.38 inches diameter, uh, 61 centimeters 24 or 24 inches long. It'll weigh about four ounces. It'll fly on all three classic Enerjets and other certain other Aerotech motors, of course. I'm, 
I'm not sure I'd put a G125 in it, uh, but it will fly up to a mile high, uh, available this spring, 2999 MSRP. So I tried to get through this quickly. Our, in summary, we continue to design and produce new and innovative model and high power composite propellant rocket motors. Our new classic Enerjet kits are planned for 2023. Our new facility will be opening this year. And we have even more great products planned for later in 2023. We're real excited about everything there. Uh, I wanna thank Dane Bowles, Carl Bauman, Jeremy Nelson, Kyle Anderson, and the entire Aerotech Quest RCS team for helping to bring these new products to reality. And we're happy to bring them out and we really enjoy what we do here. I've been in this, doing this for 50 years uh, and I, I'm still enjoying every day of it. So I'm gonna ask, gonna open it for questions and, uh, and thank you for your participation and attention. Let me get rid of, get rid of the screen. Stop share. Okay. All right. Do we have questions right. for Gary? So I just wanted to hold up. Uh, so there's the new uh, clamshell packaging for the big motors. That's a new type of uh, label on it, Gary? Yeah, it's a new facer card. You know, it'll open up in the middle with the instructions. It's got all the motor data and, and all the thrust curves on the back. And then I'll show you the, here's the E24. All, all three of the Enerjet classic motors fit in the same case. Okay, there's the back. So we, you've got all three motors data and all three motor thrust curves on there. And then the, F, the F67s. Uh, all right. Any questions for Gary here? Um, let's see. So John asks, has all the resource material been recovered from the website unpleasantness? Most of it. Yeah. There, if if there's any anything missing, let me know. I mean, either through Facebook or the Rocketry Forum. Okay. If, you, if there's something missing you want me to put up there, I'll, I'll get to it. And Larry asks, I wasn't able to find product instructions on the website when I was looking the other day. Are they there somewhere? Yeah, if you go to uh, the link that says Aerotech Resources, it'll take you over to the RCS site. And then there's, a, there's an Aerotech Resources page there. So, it, and in fact, we just recently uploaded all the kit instructions up there. Okay. And... Someone asks, you know, do a virtual tour of the museum sometime? Uh, yeah, that's a possibility. Okay, and uh, Todd wants to know, will we be doing a virtual tour for VNARCON next year of the new facility? We'll, we'll, put, we'll keep that in mind. That's okay. a great idea. Okay. I'll be in touch, Gary. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that that, that uh, sounds like it would be fun. And there is a question from Don about uh, the Enerjet, uh, the, pardon me, the Enertech kits. Any chance Aerotech will bring out any more of the Enertech kits? That's, that's definitely a possibility. Okay. All right. Okay. I, uh, I, I would like to add one thing uh, in kind of squeeze it in here. Uh, we are, we're going to have a studio in the new facility for, you know, product display and setting up trade show stuff. And we're also gonna have a little corner where we're, we're gonna have uh, planning to have uh, a, an online, you know, maybe a weekly uh, video, live video, where you'll be able to talk to some of us. And we're, we're, we're pl tentatively planning to call it Coffee with Aerotech. So uh, <laughs> that, that should be fun. Okay, great. Okay, well, thank you, Gary. You're welcome. Okay, and now, uh, hey, Todd, do we have any time left? We can we can keep going. We're five after nine. Okay. I see several of the other manufacturers are still here. Uh, does anyone else have uh, questions for manufacturers? No? Okay. All right, then. Uh, yeah. 
I'd like to thank all our participants tonight. Thank you very much. Uh, third time doing this. I think we're getting better at it. And I hope you'll all uh, be here next year to participate again. My thanks to uh, Todd Schwein for uh, running everything in the background and making sure it worked. My thanks to everyone who showed up to enjoy this. And uh, Todd, I believe we'll be repeating this uh, tomorrow afternoon. Isn't that correct? Uh, correct? That's correct. We are going to take the recording and make it part of uh, Excel events in the afternoon. So if you missed anything at this point, feel free to uh, tune in for the recording tomorrow afternoon. Okay. All right, then. Well, and I see several people saying thank you. I thank all of you and uh, have a great night and a uh, good first day of Narcon 2023. And uh, I, like you, I look forward to it tomorrow. Good night, all. Good night, Bob. Night, Gary. Good night. Good night. Mark, yeah. <laughs>